Thank you for being here. Uh, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Roll call. Chair Julie I. Smith. Present. Dr. Bill Tolomer. Present. Present. Vice Chair Lisa Ryan. Present. Crystal Clark. Present. Brittany Lee. Present. Denise Lawrence. Darian Johnson. Vice Mayor Jeff Amato. Here. Okay, tonight, uh, presentation by Principal Salter. Cypress Sherrill Elementary. All right, I think I'm unmuted. I think this is the first time that I've uh, presented on this uh, or unmuted myself. So can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, and then Jacqueline, are you gonna share my screen? How's that work? Oh, you did. Okay, now I have to figure out how to see it. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, I don't know where it is. What do I do? Um, Can everybody see the presentation? But not me. Okay, I'm just gonna improvise. So I'm gonna pull it up on my end. And then Jacqueline, you'll just, um, you'll you'll use the slides as I say so. Bruce, I think up on the top, you just need to click on use two screens maybe. And you were, we could see your computer screen, but you were, on your email, you just have to change the tab to your presentation. Huh, let's see. Do you have a dual uh, monitor set up? We're probably looking at the wrong monitor. Yeah. Okay, so now I stopped. I must have accidentally presented, okay? I'm sorry. I just, I can't see the screen that Jacqueline is sharing, so I'm just going to talk off of my presentation. Do I, do I have that, do I have that, do I have that straight that, that you're presenting for me and you'll go through the slides? Is that correct, Jacqueline? No, I don't have your presentation, Bruce. Oh, okay, so I have to share it myself. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm sorry about that. I Okay, what about now? There we go. Yes. All right, excellent. Okay, so let me see here. Okay, there we go. Is that good, everybody? Okay. All right, so so sorry about that. Um, so good evening, everybody. I'm Bruce Salter, the principal at Cypress Trails Elementary. Um, and uh, it's my honor to present tonight. Um, so let me get started with um, sharing with you the theme for my, my presentation tonight. Um, and that is that
Um, so what I'd like to do, and I'm so sorry, guys. I am presenting, but it keeps like defaulting back to our meeting. So my presentation keeps going away. And I can't figure out how to make it stay. Okay, yeah, it just keeps going back and forth. That's so weird. Okay. All right, I'm just going to keep going. So our uh, my, my theme is to uh, share with you uh, what we have done this school year to keep our connection strong. Um, and we have really placed a strong emphasis on um, trying to keep the consistency um, that we've had from year to year. Um, of course, it, it looks different. Um, and, you know, one of the mindsets that we've had is, you know, how can we provide a virtual alternative to everything that we're doing? Um, there, there's, uh, you know, no excuse for us to um, cancel something or not keep a tradition alive if we can, you know, have a, a, a virtual alternative to it to, to maintain safety. Um, so, uh, that is my, my hope for tonight, is to be able to um, share with you uh, what we've done um, so far, starting all the way back um, to last March and how we've tried to, to keep our connection strong. And... Huh. I'm sorry, everybody. I've been, I'm still not sure what's going on. Can you pull it out of presenter mode, Mr. Salter, and just leave it that way? We can look at the slides like at that piece. That's probably easier. Okay. I see what you're saying. Let me see. Okay, we'll try this. Okay, so you can just see like my PowerPoint, but not in presentation mode. Okay, so we'll just we'll 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 go this way. Okay, um, so starting all the way back in last spring, we. Okay, there we go. I just, this box, I'm so sorry, everybody. This box keeps getting in my way, and it's, now it's, okay, I'm just going to not touch anything and see see what happens. All right, so starting all the way last spring, um, we had a, um, a challenge to, to pick up, um, you know, once we resume school, um, and our, our main focus uh, was to keep our connection strong. So the first thing we needed to do was to provide equity and access um, for learning materials. Um, so once we assured that we had computers in all the students' hands who needed it, uh, we had Wi-Fi hotspots and, and other materials that were needed, like um, you know providing textbooks to students um, and things that they needed to use at home. Um, we then went to work on um, creating spirit days. Um, so each day of the week, we had a different um, theme. So for example, you, and you'll see some pictures here, um, we had pajamas and pets Fridays. Um, so th these are some of our teachers at a faculty meeting on a Friday, bringing their pets with them. Um, we also uh, made read aloud videos to try to um, provide our students with just some connectivity to us. Um, so myself, my assistant principal, teachers, we created read aloud videos for the students and shared them on our uh, Facebook page and other mediums. Um, we also, our teachers got really creative and they kept engagement and motivation high 
um, by using um, different types of incentives. And one of them that they used was actually a virtual treasure box. Um, so down here at the bottom is a picture of one of my teachers um, who a student uh, won a, an award um, that they called the Double Dog Dare Award. And the, um, the student got to pick from a list of items that they are gonna dare their teacher to do. And one of them was to eat a spoonful of mustard. Um, so that was our, our teacher doing the Double Dog Dare Award. Um, we also uh, did the Positive Lions News where my assistant principal and I um, took uh, different things that were happening uh, around the school and we actually had parents send in uh, uh, ways to nominate their children for maybe things that they were doing that were extraordinary at home and we used that opportunity to just try to create as much positive um, recognition uh, as possible. And then at the end of the year, um, we, we, we kept our tradition um, and we had a, an end of the year awards um, for all of our third through fifth graders. Um, our K through fifth grade, you know, did their end of the year class celebrations. Um, and then also too, like you see pictured here, um, we also made yard signs for all of our fifth graders. Um, and then also pictured here at the top um, was uh, one of the other ways that we recognized um, an award, which was the My Brother's um, uh, um, Sister's Keeper Scholarship winner. Um, and that was um, one of our fifth graders as well. So we really wanted to just maintain that consistency and that connectivity last spring. Um, so now we're heading into the fall. Uh, we're heading into distance learning um, and reopening our school. Um, so once again, equity and access for learning materials. That was um, at the heart of what we needed to do. Um, we really um, made sure that we uh, could provide a laptop again to anyone who did not get one from us in the spring. Uh, the Wi-Fi, the hotspots, um, we were still working on those. But this time we needed to be sure that we thought about, you know, what are some traditions and what are some things that we normally would do if we could allow parents on campus, if we, um, you know, were able to have children on campus at that point, you know, we opened up virtually um, through distance learning first. So what we did was we um, had a drive-through uh, meet the teacher event and uh, we had grade levels drive through, teachers were there, um, and parents and their children had a chance to drive through and meet their teacher. Uh, we made bags full of materials for every grade level, so teachers came in and they helped to, to stuff the bags with textbooks and other things that they needed specifically for their grade level. Um, and then we also had uh, another meet the teacher event um, which was which was virtual so that was like our traditional one where the teachers could um, introduce themselves and be able to provide you know some some orientation type information um, we also had uh, several family town hall meetings and that was one thing that i really uh, wanted was to be sure that our families knew um, not only the district expectations there was a lot going on you know this fall with school board policies and other things coming out, but also to be sure that they knew our um, uh, distance learning program at Cypress Trails, because we did you know, things that were more personalized for our families and at the elementary level. And so um, I recorded uh, multiple town hall meetings and also uh, once we reopened, that was a, a big focus for us, was that we were going to have children come on campus for the first time um, but we did not have a meet the teacher. Um, some of them had never been to our school, the kindergartners especially. Um, so how can we front load and provide as much information as possible um, to our families? And so um, we uh, had very detailed um, town hall meetings. We created a Google form in advance for parents to submit their questions. And then we had a second town hall meeting so that they could submit new questions um, you know, there was new information coming out, you know, from the district every day, it felt like at that point. So I wanted to keep uh, our families um, up to date. And then safety protocols, you know, we've talked a lot about those this year, you know, at previous presentations. Um, so our protocols are very similar to other schools that have, that have presented. 
so far um, this school year. Um, some things that might be a little different is that we do have our fine arts um, in the classroom um, for every period of the day except for PE. Um, we also don't eat in the cafeteria. Um, so all of our students eat in the classroom and we have a system um, where our cafeteria delivers lunch each day. Uh, we do a grab and go breakfast um, in the morning and students eat in the classroom as well. Um, so we do have some things that might be a little different and unique to our school. Um, but for the most part, our safety protocols are exactly aligned with the school district um, and a lot of what you've seen so far this year. Um, this picture here, um, I walk by it every day and it really, um, to me, exemplifies, I think, you know, one example of the hard work that our teachers are putting in each day. And it's just a table with some baskets on it, right? But what that is, is that is our teacher's way of getting um, materials into the hands of students at home who don't have the ability to print at home. And so our teachers are working really hard to really ensure that equity and access at home. And they're doing so each week by creating packets um, that would mimic what the students are using at school. Um, our teams are even creating like hands-on science materials that the students are using um, at home that would mimic the ones that their, that their classmates are using um, at school. So um, I, I, that just like warms my heart. Every day I walk by there and I see like the new baskets out and I see them being added. I see parents stopping real quick, you know, with their mask on to grab their packet for that week or their basket, you know, they, they, they've used it for so many different ways to, to recognize students with certificates and things like that, that they would have earned at school. Um, and that, that really is a, a wonderful example of, 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 we, of our, that goal to try to um, connect with everybody at home. Um, so next, getting into blended instruction. Now, I'm gonna focus on you know, blended instruction because that is a majority of what um, our classrooms are set up as at Cypress Trails this year. Um, we do have two completely virtual classes, one in kindergarten and one in third grade. And then we do have a total of um, five brick and mortar only classes. Um, but the rest of our classes on campus are blended and most of our grade levels are completely blended, meaning that we have students at school and students at home at the same time. And so these are uh, two pictures to show, um, you know, just some of the, the ways that our teachers are um, connecting with the students in the classroom. Um, one thing, and those, that, and those at home, one thing that um, was always a misconception, I believe, when we first, as a district, started um, reopening was that, well, students are just going to be on the computer all day. That was one you know, misconception. And that was one thing that we've really worked hard on is to how do we balance being able to have our students in school and at home, like through the distribution table that I showed you, to have paper in their hands, to have books in their hands, um, to use a notebook you know, like the, like the student is there on the left. But the one thing that students though need to do is they need to talk to each other. And the students at home and the students in the class have to be able to talk to each other. Um, and the only way for them to do that is on the computer. And so you will walk into um, our classrooms and you will see students in the room on, on their computer, but it's just like what you're seeing right here on the left. Um, this young lady is connected and it might be kind of hard to see, but she's actually connected with um, three other students, one um, who's at home and two of them are there in the room with her. But this is a group. This is m mocking what a, uh, a normal group would look like, where maybe they're sitting at the same table or they're sitting on the carpet. Um, and so that is something that we have to do. Um, and then the girl on the right is um, in her classroom. Her teacher's teaching on a smart panel but the teacher is using a program where the students can see the screen um, on, their, on their laptop, but they can respond and, um, in, in, in a variety of ways live while the teacher is teaching. And so the teacher might pull up a, a slide you know, for a reading lesson and the students can type their response.
so that way everybody in the classroom and everybody at home has an equal opportunity to respond and so those are some examples of you know what blended instruction is looking like um, in our um, in our building next um, what does blended instruction look like for fine arts and you know, like I mentioned, that is one thing that might be unique about our school is we do have all of our fine arts except for PE um, in in the classroom. Um, and so back in this, the um, early uh, fall when we first opened, you know, our teachers were all virtual. And so here's an ex some examples on the left. Uh, that's our PE coach, Mr. Barrios, there um, conducting a PE lesson. Um, and that's our art teacher, uh, you know, conducting an art lesson using, you know, you know Mona Lisa to teach um, expectations. Um, but then once we reopened, my fine arts teachers really embraced our, our plan for safety. And they understood that having all this movement all day on campus, um, you know, what was not safe. And we, we needed to, um, you know, have our students still get the equal opportunity for fine arts, but um, you know, do it in in the safety of their classroom and keeping our contact tracing and our and our bubbles as we call them. Um, so that's our art teacher and our music teacher with their carts. And so you'll see them pushing around their carts going in and out of classrooms during the day. The next thing is our family events and activities. This was a big one. Um, we really needed to be sure as a Title One. Um, you know, school, we are the only Title I um, elementary school here in the village. Um, so it's very important that we provide um, our family events and activities like we normally do, not just because, you know, we're still Title I and that's a requirement for us, um, but it's because, you know, we need to continue the, the positive spirit. And now more than ever, we need to provide these opportunities. Um, so back in the fall, um, thank you to Councilwoman Radusky. She uh, read to our students for a read for a record day. She read to the entire school. So we had every class logged into a Google Meet um, for her to read. Um, our, our teachers celebrated um, World Kindness Day. Um, so that's some of our kindergartners out in the courtyard um, using sidewalk chalk. Um, we also were very fortunate. We were supposed to get it last year, right before um, we had to close down schools, uh, but we um, came back this year, uh, focused on getting our buddy bench. Um, and so um, that is Miss Sheridan. She is a local author, um, and she also um, chairs the, the, the buddy bench program around the county. And so we're very fortunate that we were still able in a safe and virtual way um, to have a buddy bench ceremony where we were able to present it to our students. Um, we're focused on K through two for our buddy bench um, because we do have separate playgrounds. Um, and so our kindergarten through second graders had the opportunity to be recognized as ambassadors. And um, it's now on, you know, on our playground. Um, so that you know, was, was something that we really wanted to continue. Uh, another thing that we did this year on the left here is we did just um, have Celebrate Literacy Week. Um, so we love our spirit days. So we had um, spirit days for the students to dress up at school and at home. And then on that Friday, um, we did have a, um, a, uh, a parent training session where they, my resource team uh, led by my reading resource teacher, my SAI teacher, um, they did a, um, a virtual training for parents to, to provide them with resources that they can use at home. Um, and then uh, our parents were also invited to virtually read to their child's class. And so teachers um, organized that through Google, the, the Google Meet. Um, I apologize, I'm sliding my little window over here so I can see better, there we go. All right, so then a couple uh, of other events that we've had this year. Um, we had a family game night earlier this year, which was really cool. Um, it was 100% virtual, and we had um, like half of our families uh, playing Kahoot um, and teaching them how to use um, Kahoot, which is a free app that they can use. Um, and then the other half of our families were doing a home scavenger hunt. 
And um, that was just a great opportunity for families to get together. We normally do a big event here at school uh, where we use games um, and put an academic twist on them and families can play together and learn together. Uh, our kids' heart challenge is going on right now. So our PE coach is doing that class by class instead of like a whole grade level at a time. Um, and he's being very creative so that students aren't sharing um, items. Uh, we also had our first trimester awards virtual ceremony. Um, and so we recognized our grades three through five students like we always do each trimester. Um, normally on the, the Friday before Halloween, we normally have a, a book character parade and students can dress up as their favorite book character. Uh, but once again, you know, we needed to keep that same tradition alive, but how could we do it in a safe virtual way? So we had a book character showcase. Um, students still came to school and at home were dressed up, uh, but they almost did like a show and tell um, where they were um, presenting uh, on the Google Meet and families were invited as guests to, to watch the showcase. And then coming soon, we are in the works of planning a virtual family STEM night. So we're going to get creative um, with it, but we're really excited. Um, you know, as a Title I school, you know, we do receive funds to provide um, family uh, trainings and family resources. So we're going to put that to good use. Um, each grade level is planning an at-home hands-on science activity. And uh, the families are going to have the opportunity to drive through and pick up materials, just like we did earlier this year, uh, or students will take them home uh, from school. And then uh, they'll log into a Google Meet, and then they'll have a family um, science experiment, science activity at home um, that's geared specifically towards their grade level. So we're really excited about that, um, just trying to always think creatively about you know, what we can do. Um, and I don't want to forget, I accidentally skipped over in the middle here, um, is an example of how we honored veterans. Um, we, we did not have a Veterans Day program this year. Um, so instead, um, our, our students made cards um, for, for veterans. And um, our school psychologist, who is you know, really amazing with, with um, different um, philanthropy projects, um, she took all the cards to um, a local senior living facility. Um, and this, this was the Facebook post that they posted of um, some of their, some of their residents um, who were veterans receiving the cards from our students. So um, just finding ways, like I mentioned, that's our theme, keeping our connection strong um, and keeping the traditions and, and the learning opportunities going. Um, one of the major ones that we really have focused on this year is our partnership with Lion Country Safari. Um, this is a very valuable partnership to us as a um, environmental STEM choice school. Um, you know, we use our Title I funds to help support the partnership. And so um, I met with them this, this summer, you know, as we realized that, you know, we were not going to be able to have field trips and we weren't going to be able to have, you know, large group assemblies this year. Um, so we have continued the, our same partnership. Um, in two different ways. One is that all of our grade levels have adopted an animal at Lion Country Safari. And so uh, the um, education team there and some of the, the zookeepers um, have done Google Meets with each grade level um, out on the safari or around their property um, and have had the opportunity to do like an animal encounter um, and our students are uh, on the other side of the computer, are asking questions, um, and that's a really great um, way to way to connect with them. Because normally the students would go to Lion Country Safari and be able to meet the animal and be able to learn about them that way. Um, the other thing that we've done is we have each grade level has three activities that are planned this year um, that are online virtual labs or learning programs. Um, and so this one, for example, was, was kindergarten um, that you see here. And um, that's Chelsea from Lion Country Safari. And she's connected with um, a few of our kindergarten classes and being able to do a virtual presentation on the topic that the teachers chose. We always have the teachers select according to grade level standards 
you know what what program would be, would be best for for their their students and then here's some more pictures of that as well and so you'll see our students in class are seated and looking you know at the smart panel and participating whereas our students at home this is a, a virtual these are a virtual students at home the teacher here is is presenting and sharing the screen so we're able to um, be able to provide the same type of learning opportunities the same type of enrichment just unfortunately without being able to go to lion country safari um, so as I begin to wrap up, I want to uh, provide some shout outs. Um, the first one is Donna Hall. Some of you may know her through other events that we've done around the village, but Donna was an original lion. She was here in 8990 uh, when Cypress Trails opened and um, she retired uh, in August of this year. And so she spent 30 years at Cypress Trails. Um, and so we bid her fa um, farewell in a socially distant safe way um, but she um, she's wonderful and you know I wanted wanted to be sure that we recognized her for her retirement this year um, she worked as a, a paraprofessional um, an assistant teacher on campus also worked as a, a member of our after-school care program some more shout outs um, we recognized our teacher of the year and our school related employee of the year um, so on the top photo there, um, second from the left, that's uh, Karina Gypsyako. She's our school counselor and our teacher of the year. And then there in the middle, that is um, Charmaine Manley. He's our head custodian for person. Um, so he was our school-related employee of the year. And then at the bottom there, those are our four Dwyer Awards nominees. Um, from left to right, that's Brittany Nahabedian. She's a speech-language pathologist um, nominated for the... Uh, New, new category this year, uh, student advancement is the name of that category. Um, next is Debbie Brunninger. Um, she's another longtime teacher here um, and she got nominated for the STEM category. Uh, next is Amy Fleckner. She got nominated for elementary programs and she's a kindergarten teacher. And then um, that's uh, Ariana Mongwal. She's our ESOL contact and she was nominated for support program. Um, it was also our turn, and technically last year, um, it was our turn to uh, recognize the next Crystal Apple Award winner, uh, which is put on by the Rotary Club. Each um, school in the uh, the Western uh, uh, Village, our village, but in in, in our our um, um, our village, uh, has the opportunity each year to nominate a teacher. And so this year it's Lindsay Simsena. She's a third grade teacher. Uh, we were gonna recognize her at the end of last year. Um, so we had to postpone it, but she was recently recognized at our first trimester award ceremony. And then um, I wanna recognize some of our partners and uh, you'll recognize one of the gentlemen in here, our very own vice mayor, Hamera. Um, but I wanna recognize the principal at Palm uh, West Carter School, Steve Epstein, and the entire Rotary Club um, for both Thanksgiving and the winter holidays. Um, they asked us to nominate a family um, who who was in need and who, who could use um, a donated meal for each of those holidays. And so I, I want to recognize them. Um, that That's just an example of, of, of the village and what... Um, you know, of, of, of how we all contribute, um, you know, we all, um, you know, look out for each other. And uh, I really want to appreciate, you know, say, say my thank you to the Rotary Club. Um, Vice Mayor Hamera, you know, I, I know you're there. Um, I don't know if Steve is on, on tonight, but I just want to thank them. Um, Lynn Balch um, is a member of our, of our school advisory council. He's pictured there on the left. Um, so thank you to, um, to the Rotary Club. Um, so I'm going to conclude um, to invite you to connect with us. Um, so on Facebook, you can just type in at Cypress Trails Elementary. Uh, it's the page um, called Cypress Trails Elementary School, home of the Lions. That's our active Facebook page. And then also on Twitter at CTES Lions. Um, but that is it. And I, I, I'm so sorry. I, I, um, 
it's a little contradictory that our, our school's theme is our connection is strong with all the Wi-Fi bars, and here I am unable to figure out um, go to meeting, and I can't, I, I probably will, I'll be lucky if I can stop presenting, so. But, or maybe someone did for me, okay. <laughs> but thank you, everybody. I'm so sorry about that, but um, thank you for the opportunity to present tonight. Thank you. You're, you and your staff are doing some really creative things, so good job on that. Um, reports from Central Region. Good evening, everyone. How are you? I'm so glad to see you again this month. Um, glad to see that everyone is doing well and, and uh, you know, be safe and, and in good health. Um, well, we have uh, quite a few, well, quite a few items to cover. Um, I do want to share with you that now with the um, make it 3.0, we've had an increase of students uh, that are now in schools that's on their campuses that are brick and mortar. So I, um, in preparation for tonight, I did look up at all of the, the numbers for Royal Palm, and uh, all of the elementary schools are about the same, with an average of about 62% of the students in school, which is a huge increase from before. Uh, we have been working with our families and our communities um, to ensure that our students are back in school as quick as possible, recognizing that uh, distance learning, um, you know, is, is, is not the best case scenario for our students. We know that they need to be in school, but we also want them to be safe. So uh, with that said, I am uh, pleased, uh, you know, to share that at the elementary level specifically, uh, we've had a significant increase of students that are in brick and mortar. Uh, Crestwood Middle School is at 38%. They too have increased. Um, and Royal Palm Beach High School is still at 15%. So, you know, that really gives us a picture of nowadays how uh, educated high school students have completely shifted, right? And that they much rather just uh, be home and uh, receive their, their, their learning and learn in that form. But, um, we prefer the students in school, <laughs> uh, but that doesn't seem to be the popular thing with our high school students. Um, I do want to share also that um, H.L. Johnson, as you know, we have our new principal and Crystal is with us tonight uh, as a, the new principal of H.L. Johnson. So we're thrilled that she has made a, a very smooth transition into H.L. Um, and so, you know, we will continue working with her and she's got she has uh, support partners, too, in the uh, Village of Royal Palm Beach with the rest of our principals and our uh, regional office. Um, the other piece, too, is I wanted to share that uh, letter number eight, and yes, we do number them. Uh, now we're down to about once a month in which our schools uh, send out um, update letters to our parents and communities, and that is scheduled to, uh, to be distributed this coming Friday. So the next one that's going out, so if you're a parent, just keep, uh, you know, keep your eyes open for that. In that letter, um, we are going to be announcing the two important dates, one of which is for uh, progress reports for elementary schools for the second trimester that are going out, as well as the report cards for secondary schools. That, too, is also uh, going to be out, um, actually, the 11th, so it's the day before the letter goes out. But just a reminder uh, to our parents, so that you, uh, as parents, we stay in contact with how our progress of our students. Uh, the last piece is that we have uh, just completed, prior to uh, the end of January, the winter diagnostics. And as you know, that is about the halfway point when we take a look and see how our students are progressing. And, you know, I, I, I will say that um, we have a lot of room for opportunities because we have to spin this in a positive way, right? Uh, we know that there's been a COVID slide. We know that we've had school closure slide. We know that the students have been negatively impacted in their learning by everything that has happened with, you know, with the pandemic. We know this. But now we have numbers to tell us how, you know, how severe the loss is. And in some cases, it is pretty severe. And so the way that we're uh, actually looking at the action planning by schools is looking at it from a sense or from the lens of opportunity. What is it that we can do now short term? And then what is the long term goal in order for us to get all of our students caught up? 
So, um, and, and you know, and and the reality is, is you wonder, are, are we ever going to be able to catch up all our students? And in some cases, the answer is no. But in other cases, the answer is yes, we have time to be able to do that work, especially for our younger children. So we are working with our principals. We are working, um, you know, looking through their uh, the data and analyzing, but then thinking about how can we use every single minute of the school day, uh, very strategic and very intentional, in order for our students to have the very best um, uh, uh, opportunity for learning for the limited amount of time that we still have. So uh, no news from the state. We're still in gear um, in uh, assessing our students for the state exams. Uh, third grade is really coming up in, in seven weeks. It's seven weeks away. And the same thing with our writing uh, portion of the ELA test for the rest of our students, uh, third grade through 10th uh, grade. So uh, we have still a lot of work to do ahead of us, but, uh, but we're, we're going to make it happen. You know, we're going to make it happen. We have no other option. So with that said, I'm going to um, open up for questions for me before we go to Ms. Andrews. Hey, Valerie, this is Bill. Um, could you or Vivian give me an indication of how many hours of online training the faculty went through this year? How many? I'm sorry, I didn't. Hours of training, online training, like how to teach online. Um, well, we've had, uh, you know, on and off, we started that work in professional development back in March. Um, I will say this, though. Our district, now it's more than 50% of our staff, but our district has um, had a lot of online training even prior to the closure. It was something, you know, that we call them trailblazers, that they went through extensive training, two-day trainings, and uh, it, depending on the school, at the elementary level, there would be two to three teachers per grade level, uh, especially in the upper grades that have had extensive training for years now. This is not the first year. This probably is about the second or third year that we've had those type, uh, the trailblazers trained in that way. So every school certainly had um, the means to be able to build from that, with uh, what we call trailblazers and experts in online teaching. Uh, but of course, um, as uh, time pushed us to move much quicker, um, you know, our, our teachers did receive a few hours last spring um, in preparation for uh, shifting into virtual teaching and learning. But I will say that in-house, within um, each one of our faculty, there are experts that are able to assist and um, be able to support the PLC um, for the delivery of from the other teachers that are not that we're not quite there yet. Um, is there anyone else that would like to answer to them, Ms. Green or one of our principals, Dr. Armas, or uh, just to add to um, what you said, um, Valerie, the um, the training is ongoing. So mm -hmm. at any given time, um, our teachers. Um, can access um, training to facilitate their growth in that area. So, I mean, do you guys see this continuing as a new skill set? Because you know, a couple of things differentiate instruction that you know some people are doing pretty well in this you know environment. But it's, it's part of an ongoing thing to kind of create a, a dual skill set for the faculty. Yes, and, and and that is something that they they grow uh, really on a day to day basis. You know, one of the things that I did, and it's. Uh, I, want, I wanted to know myself uh, as a practitioner what it felt like to teach under a simultaneous uh, teaching model. And so um, I took that on as a challenge but about a week ago. It was last week. It was last week. Um, at one of the schools that I support, um, I actually planned even the night before, and, and, I, and I attempted, and I made the attempt of teaching simultaneously myself to be able to get a better gauge as to the challenges that our teachers um, are facing. And it is quite challenging. It is quite challenging, but I tell you, I am so impressed with the way in which our teachers have just uh, taken this challenge on and not only met the expectation, but in some cases exceeded the expectations. And a lot of this is really self-learned. You know, a lot of these different, um, what I noticed that even the morning when I arrived to the classroom, uh, to teach uh, in this in this particular teacher's class, it took the teacher and myself, because of course I was watching and learning on my own, um, 
it took the teacher a good 10, 15 minutes to hook everything up and turn everything on to be able to, to even start teaching for the day. So um, it is something that, you know, a, a lot of it was self-taught. And, and some of it is just ongoing professional development that they continue receiving. And it's just by the experience that they're having. It's on the job, embedded professional development, and they're just doing it. So, um, you know, in some areas, yeah, it, can we improve? Absolutely. But that goes along with even teaching brick and mortar all the time. Everybody has, you know, uh, room to grow and get better. Mm. And that's great forward thinking, Valerie and Vivian. I appreciate that, that you guys are thinking about that. And uh, it, just one suggestion from experienced here at my house is, you know, sometimes the learners don't understand how to be a great online learner. There's some pieces, some best practices they could probably help. So any of that that they add to the teacher side of that would be great. So uh, thank you for the answer. I appreciate that. Anytime. I think Dr. Armas has his hand up. I see him way back there. Dr. Armas, you're up. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, can't see you. Okay, it's hard to hear. I had a brilliant idea. Can you hear me? Okay. Oh, the speakers now. Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Barely. On the day, is they're saying no, though. You guys got me. It's hard to hear you in here, Dr. Armis. So I, I can't believe I'm saying this to you, but would you speak up, please? <laughs> I, I got one better for you. What Dr. Armas is doing is kind of showing some of the challenges that we encounter every once in a while. No, is that better? Where am I? Am I here? There we go. Can you hear me a little bit better now? Okay. So I had a brilliant idea. I was going to do this in the conference room. I was going to introduce my new APs. Uh, obviously a bad idea. Uh, I think I think Ms. Haynes has been, uh, uh, you know, in the screen there. They're being a little humble when it comes to all of this. Uh, when it comes to providing teacher training, uh, as a regional, uh, and I don't know about other regions, but I know that our regional superintendent and instructional superintendents do a great job of, of uh, helping the principals to then help the, the, the teachers. Because the problem is, is that if you look at the district calendar, we've been stripped of all of our professional development days and opportunities. We, we lost all those half-day LPMs. And then this year, uh, because of the collective bargaining agreement and the MOU, uh, we don't we, uh, we don't we even lost our professional development days. So what the regional superintendent's uh, office has done is they're kind of providing us principals with the resources. And I know that here at Royal Palm, and I'm, I know that uh, you know my colleagues are doing the same thing. What we're doing is taking every opportunity within our school day to get our teachers some kind of training, either through our faculty meetings or through our professional development teams because all schools have a professional development team where you have, a, a, where you have one a leader or PD who then has a team and then they help. So what we've been trying to do is after school, during planning periods, it's a little easier for us than at the elementary level. But, but really, um, the, the real answer is we can never provide enough in the short amount of time, right? But, but here in this region, uh, Valerie and, and uh, and uh, the instructional soups have done a great job of providing uh, us with all the resources that we need. Thank you, Dr. Armas. Well, to, to Dr. Armas' point, it really does take a village. <laughs> but uh, at the end of the day, you know, the, the schools are getting it done. And so we're very appreciative of everything that, that they're doing it that they're doing to make it happen and to make it a, a good experience for our students. Any other questions for for me or Ms. Green before we turn it over to Ms. Andrews? All right, Ms. Andrews. Thank you. Can everyone hear me? Great. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Mr. Salter, Cypress Trail, you did a great job tonight in your presentation. And you connected with all of us very nicely. So I'm happy to hear about the great things that's happening at Cypress Trails Elementary. So keep up the great work. But before I talk a few uh, about a few things tonight, I just want to say this. I'm trying to say this every time I walk into a school or if I see a teacher or a principal, a bus driver, thank you. It's been a difficult time with the pandemic and the COVID-19. And to see you all out there on the front line each and every day. 
I thank you. I thank your region office. I thank the bus drivers. I thank the principals. I thank the teachers, the cafeteria ladies. I thank the custodians. I thank the entire group of you that have kept it going for the whole year. It's been a year that we've been through this crisis and we have succeeded. Uh, we've had some ups and downs and we're still working through a lot of things, but we wouldn't be where we are today if it were not for all the work that you've done. So I want to commend you all. Every time I walk into school, I was up at Royal Palm High School a little bit today and on Friday and, and to be into the schools a lot and seeing you all working. I'm just so thrilled. We are in second semester now. We have more students back now than we've had before. And when we talk about high schools, that's the area where we have the least amount of students back, not just at Royal Palm Beach High School, but it's all across the district. And elementary has been a front runner in getting the students back. They've been coming back at elementary in great uh, numbers all along and at middle school, but at high school, it's a lot different. But we need to get our students back to school, everybody. And that's so important to me to see them in school. I was over at Smith Middle School just last, uh, last uh, Thursday, and I saw all those children on campus. Half of the children were back to school. So when I walk into the school, I see you. I see you back at school, and I see the students, and they're so happy. And Darren, you were right there at Royal Palm Beach High School on uh, last week for the Black History Celebration, leading the school as you do right here in our monthly meeting. So when the students are at school, they're learning in a different way and they're uh, really making it happen. We have a lot of students uh, that's, that's having a, a learning loss right now. And when we say that, we mean that they're not really making it with the remote learning. And it, it's really traumatic when you look at the numbers. And I'm asking uh, Ms. Haynes and Mrs. Uh, Vivian Green to bring that report that I heard at the school board meeting last week of all these children that are being left behind because of this remote learning piece that we're doing. That's why I'm encouraging you to tell parents when they get to the school center and sign their children back or fill the form out to get back to school, the kids are so happy. I have a mentee and I talked with him today. He started second semester. He said, Ms. Andrews, I'm so glad to be back in school. And his mother was a little worried about sending him back. But the child told me just today, I'm so glad to be back in school. It's the best thing that I've done. So we've got to get them back. And we won't turn any parent down that want to send their child back to school, even though we had the forms and they were supposed to commit. If a parent wants to bring their child back to school, send them to school. It's really, really important. And I want you to know that one of the big things that's a little hesitant with parents is because of the pandemic and the vaccines. The school district has done a, a, a very good job in trying to get everybody 65 and above their vaccine. And you know, they're actually starting up a new vaccine protocol at the South Florida Fairgrounds now, which is gonna help this central location. Publix has been the main uh, place here for almost everybody. And they had some specialized uh, testing in the Glades region, but we really didn't have what we needed in this central, central location. And I think this week, the fairgrounds will be a big opportunity for a lot of people to get their vaccines, especially the ones that are 65 and above. But we were out with the governor last week in Pahokee. One of the first things we said to him when he got off the plane and made it to Pahokee that we need educators, bus drivers, teachers, principals, everybody. I don't care how old they are. If they work for the school district, they need to be in that priority category. And he indicated to us that he knows that and he's working towards that. And they're trying to get the numbers of vaccines. One thing he said to us is that Palm Beach County has gotten the most vaccines than anybody in the state of Florida. So I said, okay. Uh, Governor DeSantis, if you say so, but we really need more. And he says he's going to try to get more and trying to move the teachers up into the priority group. And that means the bus drivers, uh, the custodians, the principals, everybody, everybody that works for the school district of Palm Beach County. Because once we can get that shot into their arms, everybody's going to be ready to go back to school. So we're working to get that done as quickly as possible because it truly is important. The superintendent has been working to make sure that we get the 65 and above people in. 
And that's been going pretty smoothly, but we know that that's a big piece that we have to do is to get this, everybody uh, their vaccines as soon as possible. And I want to tell you that, you know, we normally have the legislative presentation at Royal Palm Beach Advisory Education Advisory Committee. Well, I'm hoping we'll have it before the end of the year. We're getting ready to go into uh, the legislative session as we speak. And one of the things we're asking, and there's a, uh, there's a bill out there, is that the, that the school districts are held harmless this year for that school, those school grades, the district grading system. And we as a school board, we're actually telling our legislators we want to fight. We want to do a call to action to make sure that we don't, we don't, uh, we don't uh, blame the children. We don't want to blame the families in the middle of a pandemic and say to them, well, you didn't make it when it wasn't their fault that the whole world is going through this pandemic, this COVID-19 situation. So we're fighting uh, and we're talking to our legislative delegation in Palm Beach County as well as all of the state. And there is a bill out there that's asking us to kind of put that on hold right now, a pause this year. We know that we need to test our children to find out where they are, but we don't want to uh, hold them uh, and say to them uh, and punish them with the letter grade or the school district of Palm Beach County with a letter grade when there were so many circumstances beyond our control as we looked at us trying to get technology, internet access, many students still at home on the computer, and the mental health strain that's taken a toll on all of these children. Uh, it has been tremendous. And this is why when we say we're going to have uh, more days in school. We want to be trained. We want the teachers to get trained, but we really know that we've got to make sure that we provide as many days to educate these students to try to catch them up as much as possible. It's not going to happen in a summer school setting this year, all of it. It's going to take about two to three years to bring them back. Some of the children were, were scuffling before trying to make it. And can you imagine with this major pandemic that's happened to them for a full year or more, it's going to take them longer. So we know that we're going to have to do what we have to do. We're going to have to put, put, to put more money, more resources, more, uh, more, more human resources, teachers and, and tutors, and everything that's necessary to help all the children that have fallen behind. That's why it's so critical to get the children back to school as quickly as possible. And the governor is, is, is aware, and the legislators are aware, and I think they're supporting us in our efforts not to start criticizing and grading and evaluating and holding the teachers accountable. For many times, they're teaching simultaneously. A lot of kids, we got about 1,300 kids that we have to find in Palm Beach County that have not had a, uh, a computer uh, connection for school, uh, school learning. So we still have to work like, with social workers, trying to get out there into the community, knocking on doors, finding students that have been lost through this process. We found a lot of them and brought them back, but there's a lot of them out there still lost. A lot of the high school kids have gotten jobs where their parents have lost their job and they're out there working, trying to support the household. There's so many scenarios as to why the children have not come back, especially at the high school level. And I thank people like Dr. Armas and the high school principals across Palm Beach County for looking under each rock to see how they can find these students because they're out there and maybe they have been evicted from their home and they may not live in the same location anymore. There's so many scenarios of why these children have not come back to school, everybody, because this pandemic has impacted families in so many different ways. That's why I'm thanking everybody on this screen as well as everybody that's in the school every single day but doing their very best to find the children, to teach them, to help them, because the mental stress on every child in the home, as well as in the school center, it's been tremendous over this last year, and we're going to provide as much support as we can for them. Uh, a big piece that we're working on right now with the school board and the superintendent is revisiting our strategic plan. It is sun shining very shortly, and we want to make sure we get the input from the Royal Palm Beach Educational Advisory Board as we work through the new strategic plan. And we will not have a strategic plan until we get the voices of all of the stakeholders. So we're going to be reaching out to you to get your input about what you see that the district needs to be doing better, 
and the things that we did well in the past and how we can restructure ourselves to make sure students get the best education possible for success. And I want to tell you that uh, our newest um, educational advisory committee is in Westlake. And they will be reaching out to you, Roy Palm Beach, because your vet, uh, your educational advisory committee has been in place for a long, long time. But they had their inaugural committee meeting uh, uh, last month, and I was able to attend, and I did invite them to reach out to you, uh, Councilman Hamera, as well as the whole team here in Royal Palm Beach. And Wellington is a little different from Royal Palm Beach, so they need to look at how the uh, advisory committees work in all of the different municipalities. The Tri-Cities and Bell Lake work a lot different from what happens in Royal Palm Beach and Wellington. And so as Westlake begins their new advisory committee, I do want you all to take note, if you get a call, provide the support for them. This is the first time they were doing it and it was exciting to see them. And that will include all the schools and the acreage as well as uh, Loxahatchee Grove. So uh, and they'll be meeting again in March. And so I think a few of you might be on that with us, but we'll be working a lot with the North area uh, principals and region superintendents and a little bit of the central area because you do have a little, little piece of that with Loxahatchee Grove Elementary. And I want to say to you that the superintendent is very willing to come to our meetings to discuss anything with you as it relates to the changes that we're having uh, with this pandemic. Uh, our chief of staff, Ed Tierney, I think when you asked the question last time, Bill, he actually spoke to you at the end of that meeting. And so we want to hear your voices because in order to get our kids back, we have to know what parents are saying. We have to get the voices of the community, our stakeholders. And I would like uh, just a phone call away if you need me. As I walk through the schools each day and I see you all, I'm so excited about the work you're doing. And I can't wait for every child to be back on campus as soon as possible. So I know you may have some questions, but I just had to share those things that were on my heart today because we've made it. We still have a long way to go. But can you imagine when we first started, we didn't even have enough computers for everybody and internet access. And now we've done a lot of work and you to be commended and I know it's going to get better. It's gonna take time to get it all straight, but we are up to the task because we have the best leaders here in Palm Beach County School District. Questions? Thank you, Ms. Andrews. Thank you. Okay, principals. Principal Armas. Hi, uh, thanks again uh, for uh, for having us. Uh, I, again, I had I had this great idea. You know, I got two new APs. We're going to have them here in presenter mode, and then now they're so far away I can't even see them. And I'm in the same room. So first of all, we obviously want to congratulate Ms. Amato, who who uh, it was a brilliant, brilliant administrator, uh, assistant principal here at Royal Palm Beach High School. Uh, I tell people all the time, uh, she's as good as any that I've ever worked with or that have gone on to be great principals themselves. And so the H.L. Johnson uh, community and all of uh, Royal Palm is really, really fortunate to have her uh, in that seat because uh, she really is that good. We're very, and of course here at Royal Palm, we're really proud of her too because, uh, you know, she grew up here. Uh, and uh, so, uh, with uh, another assistant principal, Renee Howe, uh, who is also very, very good, uh, she has decided to leave the business after 22 years and, and 10 here at Royal Palm and, and three as an assistant principal, and she's gone on into the private sector and, and out of the business. And that's unfortunate for public education in general and for us because she was really good. Uh, so, we had two AP openings. So, I'd like to introduce. I, heck, I don't know if you can see him. It's uh, <laughs> Misty, Misty Ligerfeld over here, and uh, Victoria Cody over here, and uh, they're going to be really, really good, and, and they've already uh, started and are fitting in, and they'll be fantastic. And so uh, we're looking forward to great things from them. Um, just a few other announcements. Uh, you perhaps saw in the news that uh, caps and gowns now 
according to uh, the district edict, uh, now have to be one color. Traditionally, Royal Palm Beach High School has had two colors. It came down because of the fact that it was uh, that uh, most everybody who had two colors chose uh, on a gender-based uh, uh, way, and and of course uh, that violates all sorts of things. And we certainly don't. And even if it didn't violate it, we certainly don't want to put any of our kids in any kind of position where a color of a gown makes them uncomfortable. So the class of 2020, last year's class, uh, did away with gender-based caps and gowns at Royal Palm, but we still voted to have two, two colors. So it was by student selection. Uh, uh, so we, we felt we weren't violating any laws or rules or school board policy. However, the district uh, told us that we also had to go to one color. So we will be going to one color. Now I'm in the process of deciding how we want to go about doing this. Um, uh, really, it comes down to two colors, a teal or a black, and it comes down to who's going to make the decision. And so uh, we're in the process of working our way uh, through all that uh, to, to make a final decision as to what color, what one color our graduation gown is. Uh, for the record, I'm not thrilled about this. We, we wanted our two colors. We felt it wasn't violating anything, but... Um, but it is what it is, and so we now are we're now at one color. Speaking of graduation, uh, we want to remind everybody that June 8th at 6 p.m. will be our graduation. Uh, and and by all accounts, right now, and there's a long uh, a long disclaimer that the lawyers say we have to say at some point. I don't have it memorized, uh, but uh, but you know, obviously, it'll well. The goal is to have it live, and. We're, that's what we want to do. If things change in the world and we can't have it live, then we'll have to do something else. But right now, the plan is to go live. It's a good plan. It won't be the same. It won't be exactly the same as we're used to, but it will be live and it will be very good. And I've seen the plan, and I don't even know if it's for public consumption at this point, but uh, but certainly I, I like it. I think it's well done, well thought of. Eric Stern has worked with uh, the district leadership uh, he uh, he's the one who puts on uh, commencement ceremonies uh, every year, and uh, he does a great job and uh, has a really good plan. And so uh, I look forward to that coming through and uh, and happening. More graduation stuff. Uh, our graduation rate for the class of uh, 2020 came out, and we were and for the fifth time in the last six years, a class broke the school record. This record, uh, this class had a 93.8 percent graduation rate which is a uh, which is a again the fifth record now that we've had in the last six years um, <laughs> we're going to get to a number that can't get beat eventually right because uh, it's very difficult to keep uh, you know outdoing each class outdoing uh, the other but uh, but certainly we're really happy with that number uh, and we feel there was a lot of good work by, done by a lot of people starting with the students and their families but certainly our faculty and staff and our counselors uh, you know, when people talk about how, how you go from 70% where we used to be to 93.8 where we are now, uh, it's a very simple thing. Uh, the counselors know every single student. And when we're going over the students who, who, we, who are at risk to graduate, they, you know, I'll ask the counselors about that student. The counselor will tell me everything about that child that you'd ever want to know. So uh, our whole thing is, is if we can get them here, if we can get them here, we can graduate. Problem is, is when we can't get them here. The truancy uh, and the absenteeism, and and um, and that is why you know both Miss Haynes and Miss Andrews have talked about the engagement piece. We're very concerned, folks. Uh, there's no hiding. Okay, there's no hiding. I am very, very concerned about student engagement right now. Uh, we have all sorts of lists. We're calling. We're making home visits. Right? We are literally going to their houses and knocking on doors to get kids to get into classrooms, and uh, virtually or brick and mortar, I don't care. We just need to get them engaged, and uh, we're, we're really we're chasing them down. But folks, it's not easy, and I am concerned about this, and, and it is going to show in school grades and, and, and down the road, down the road for, uh, for the kids. So we just want to continue to try to do that. Um, we do have our uh, – we do – it's tougher to read my own handwriting these days. Uh, the – we have our 25th anniversary will be next year. 
Uh, and uh, and so we've already have we have a committee going uh, that is starting to work already on what we hope to be a year long celebration, live and in person. I hope of uh, of uh, of the school, and uh, we'll have some events coming up. We'll have a logo and some things that'll be coming up. Aaron Vaughn, one of our emerging leaders on this campus, a teacher, is uh, is chairing that committee, and uh, and we. Uh, uh, we're looking forward to having a, a 25th anniversary, a year-long ce celebration of our anniversary. And then uh, the last thing I have to talk about, unfortunately, is not the kind of stuff that I like to talk about. Uh, I'm sure you've seen in the newspaper where we had a teacher who was arrested uh, uh, for lewd conduct. Um, obviously, right now, too soon, there's no way that I could get into any kind of detail of those kind of things right now. Investigations are ongoing, that kind of stuff. So unfortunately, uh, there's not much more I can say about this. But here's what I can tell you. Uh, you know, what we did here was uh, we reached out to uh, the parents. I sent them an email uh, uh, of the program uh, that the teacher was in, letting, the, letting them know exactly how I was going about it. This morning I met with the, uh, with the uh, ROTC has a, uh, has a hierarchy of cadets, right? Uh, Vice Mayor Hamara knows about all about that, right? And so they have a staff and commanding officer in there. And so what we, what I did was I met with them today, and then I'll be meeting with all of the students uh, in that program on uh, uh, on Wednesday, right? And I've, I've already communicated by email with parents, uh, and I can tell you this: that I am so very, very proud of our students and of our community as to how they're handling this. Look, we, there's no way that we're going to allow the actions of one person to define who we are. And certainly they don't define us. And, uh, and so the kids have been great. Their biggest concern through all this has been about their program and it continuing. Of course the program will continue. Like I told the kids, while, while, uh, while any program needs a great te a lead teacher, the heart of every program is its students. And our, and our uh, cadets in our ROTC program uh, really work hard. They love the program. And, uh, and I told them that, that the program will continue. And uh, there's no doubt about that. And, and it'll continue and they have really stepped up. So I'm very proud of our school community, uh, some parent who, parents who are, um, who are uh, retired military, have uh, volunteered to help out some, so really, uh, like we mo well, like we always do as a school community, when when things go wrong on us a little bit, we uh, we come together, and uh, and we handle it. And so I'm very proud of the school community uh, for how we've handled this so far. Obviously, it's never a good thing, but uh, uh, to have to deal with this, but we will. We'll overcome this, and uh, and of course, we continue to look out for the safety of our students, which is really uh, paramount. Uh, that's it. Thanks for listening. I appreciate you. Thank you. Madam Chair, just uh, Dr. Armas, maybe I missed this. Didn't you, uh, didn't you have one of your super APs get an award recently? I'm sorry? One of your super APs get an award recently? Oh, yeah. You're kidding. Uh, Justin, uh, Justin Arnone, that we still like to claim, uh, he, uh, he was one of our uh, – Mr. Arnone also grew up with us. He started as a social studies teacher here, and uh, when I got here, he was a uh, he was a social studies and doing uh, student council. Uh, he uh, said he wanted to become a, a leader, so we kind of put him in our emerging leader program. And uh, he is brilliant, most deserving of an award like that. Unfortunately, when the time came and he was ready to become an AP, at the time we didn't have an opening. And so uh, we couldn't keep them here. We would have loved to have kept them. But, uh, but uh, so uh, we, we, I always tell Mr. Edgecombe at, at Palm Beach Central that he's on loan over there. And that anytime we want, we're going to bring him back. <laughs> but, uh, and that the only reason to stop him here from doing it is that Darren is a good friend of mine. But, yes, thank you for bringing that up. Justin Arnone was the AP of the, of the year uh, for the district. And, folks, I'm telling you. He's well deserved. He'll be a great principal one day. Thank you for that, Dr. Collins. Yeah, you're welcome. He's a wonderful, wonderful human being. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay.
any other principals want to say anything? And I just need to uh, mention that the deadline for the scholarship applications is this Friday, February 12th. So um, anybody wanting to apply for the village scholarships needs to put in their application by 5 p.m. on this Friday, the 12th. And then uh, we'll go to our student council report next. Sorry, Ms. Haynes, go ahead. Sorry, I just, I, I, I could not um, finish the evening without, of course, uh, thanking Mr. Salter for doing such a wonderful job tonight uh, showcasing Cypress Trail. Thank you for your leadership. And we know how difficult um, leading schools today is. And so we appreciate everything that you're doing. Um, and uh, thank you for showcasing. You did a great job. Okay, you Mr. Guys, Johnson. You guys can hear me? All right, good evening. Before I read my report, I would just want to give uh, honor where honor is due. I um, want to solicit a special shout out to Mrs. Amato. Everyone's shouting her out, so I can't leave her out either. Um, she's turned into a mighty Jaguar, and I believe that HLJ is in great hands. I've realized that I only have two more EAB meetings to attend before I graduate high school and be launched into the next phase of my life, which is college. Um, so these last two reports will be very special and very imperative uh, to me when it pertains to Royal Palm Beach High School. The school district of Palm Beach County is honoring the 17 Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School victims by encouraging students, staff, and the community to engage in 17 acts of kindness leading up to February 14th. Well, let me announce that Royal Palm Beach High School has a lineup of activities, days, and games to show our support. Days that consist of cards for counseling, paper heart chains, act of kindness videos, kindness banners, inspirational quotes delivered to teachers, and the list goes on. But that isn't quite it. The month of February also holds power because it's Black History Month. Royal Palm Beach High School honors the past, celebrates the present, and embraces the future. Black Student Union usually hosts this extravaganza on campus, but due to COVID-19, they've recorded a virtual video on campus where they've invited successful doctors and successful career-bound to present wonderful medals and certificates on Friday, February 5th, 2021. I would be remiss if I did not honor Palm Beach County Board Member Marcia Andrews, who came out to support and dedicate love, joy, and peace to the student body. She also dedicated two books to two students, and I'm proud to say that I was one of those students. Thank you again, Mrs. Andrews, for your vigor and your vitality that you, exp that you express to all students in this school district. Your future is embedded within love, and that is why we also honor you on Black History Month. EAB, let's continue to walk in love because Maya Angelou once said, love is like a virus, and it can happen to anybody at any time. I yield the floor. Thank you. Another great report, as usual. Um, anybody have anything? Members have anything that they want to report or say? I'd just like to quickly share that, um, Mr. Salter, I was really impressed with your presentation, and I love that you embraced uh, the school year and uh, started with the presentation today with your theme, Our Connection is Strong. I think that shows um, your strong leadership and um, how you and your team were thinking outside the box with the virtual treasure box, the reading aloud several town hall meetings, just making sure everybody was on the same page with moving forward with the school year. Just overall, great job. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. We need to approve the minutes of our last meeting. I think Jacqueline sent them to everyone. Make a move that we... Uh Accept the minutes as submitted. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Any um, new business or old business that anyone has for us? Madam Chair, just real quick, I want to yeah. uh, thank Ms. Andrews. Um, I had some questions last meeting, and uh, she arranged a meeting with 
uh, Mr. Tierney, the Chief of Staff, and uh, the right hand, uh, the uh, blend of the uh, academic person. And uh, we talked a lot and talked about some things that we were, we thought we could help them with communicating some of the things that are going on from our, this, the Royal Palm uh, Advisory Group. And we got to some good things that they were bringing to the table and they're thinking about and some things about how we can help them. So they reached out. So I want to thank Ms. Andrews for setting that up and Valerie for you and your team to kind of make sure that we stay in the loop because uh, we're advocates of what you're doing and we help in this community to help get the message out. So we thank you for that and I thank you for that meeting. Okay, our next meeting is Monday, March 1st. And Crestwood Middle School will be um, presenting at that time. Anything else? Okay. We, need, we have to have a motion to adjourn, right? Make a motion to adjourn. I make the motion we adjourn the meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone, for being here.